Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I got an exciting video for you today that's going to cover the modules we're offering in Q1 of 2024. Now, we've added a new brand to the mix up and that's really why I'm doing this video because it is considered one of the top tier solar panels of the industry and that's the Maxion, which used to be referred to as SunPower. So SunPower has their modules manufactured by Maxion. They've always had them manufactured by Maxion, but SunPower Maxion are kind of going separate ways and Maxion is now selling direct through distribution channels rather than having to sell direct through SunPower, which then you would have to be a SunPower partner in order to offer the Maxion panels. Now we're gonna be comparing the Maxion module against our very popular REC Alpha module and our next in line, the QCell G10 Plus. Both of these panels are phenomenal. Our customers love them, we love them, but let's compare it to the Maxion and let you figure out if it's worth getting that premium, premium panel because that's what the Maxion module is. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area of Southern California, obviously we're in the business of installing and selling solar and battery backup systems. So go ahead, use the link right down there in the description below to request your hassle-free quote, so that way we can help you make the switch to clean, renewable energy. All right, so let's start off this video talking about the standard testing condition wattage. Now the STC rating of any solar panel is the maximum power rating it can achieve, right, in a lab. Now this isn't always the number you wanna be paying attention to, but a lot of the quotes that you'll be getting will be based upon the STC total rating. So if you had 20 panels and the STC rating of each panel is 400, well, that's gonna give you an eight kilowatt solar system. Now, when you're pairing that panel to a microinverter or even a central inverter, a hybrid inverter, you really should be looking at other data points listed on the specification sheets of the solar panels, not necessarily the STC, which is that best case scenario, right? So for the Maxion, the best case scenario, the STC was 415 watts. Trust me, that is a lot of power. Now compared to REC, we currently have a 405, and then we compare that to Q-Cell, we have another 405. So Q-Cell and REC both equal at 405 watts. The Maxion, a little bit more power, 10 watts more per panel. Now is that gonna add up to a lot of more energy over the course of the year? Probably not. Just to put that into perspective, if you had a 20 panel system of say REC, that's an 8.1 kilowatt system. So 8,100 watts. Compare that to the Maxion, that's 8.3 kilowatts. That's 8,300 watts. So we're talking about a 200 watt difference between the two systems. That's less than a half a panel on both sides. So not a big difference. But if we move over to the NMOT rating, that's the nominal module operating temperature, this is going to be closer to that real world power output. I don't have any data available. Yeah, Maxion doesn't have it on their price sheet. REC has it, QCell has it. A lot of panels include this rating. Sometimes it's referred to as the NOCT rating, so nominal operating cell temperature. And this is just a different test. It's always it's still done in a lab. It's just a different test done with different iridium ratings and different temperature conditions to give us a more realistic power output. Is it possible for you to reach like the max power output of the Maxion, like 415? Maybe in a perfect scenario, but more than likely you're gonna be somewhere between the NMOT rating and the STC rating. Sadly, like I said, there's no data available. Maxine doesn't include that in their specification sheets. I did try to get the details and um, I reviewed some of the SunPower modules on the market that are comparable. Those don't include it either. So I wasn't able to really figure out what that number is because to, in order to do the calculations, I need to know the NOCT rating as well as the operating temperature for their coefficiency. And I don't have some of that data and it's not included. So. We're gonna just put it as no data available. I suspect it's more than what REC is, and that's 309 watts. Q-cell's 
I definitely believe it's more than Q-cell, but I really don't know because it's different technology than REC and Q-cell use. So one of the big differences that Maxian does in the manufacturing process is the back sheeting to the module. The entire backside is a solid piece of thin copper. So on the front side, when you're looking at the cell, you are literally just looking at a cell. You are not seeing any diodes, bus bars. There's nothing connected on the front side, which is allowing them to get more power per square inch realistically out of each cell because you don't have little bars going through them like you get with REC and Q cell. So Maxian manufacturing process is completely different and it kind of will show in terms of the cost later on. Moving on to the panel efficiency. This was kind of a shocker. I expected it to be a little bit more, but it was actually the same as the REC Alpha Pure that we offer. So 21.9%. That's phenomenal. In my opinion, anything over 20% is a great efficiency place to be at because it's really hard to get anything higher than even 22%. You really start pushing the limits of the silicon technology and the cells themselves. But uh, I think there's been some manufacturers, I think LG, held the record uh, at like 25%, and they did that in a lab. I don't even think they ever released a panel that did 25%. So 21.9% for Maxian, which is the same for REC. q is a little bit less. It's 20.6%, not a big difference. Honestly, you're not gonna see it in the real world if you went with Q-Cell versus REC or Maxian. That 1% difference in power output isn't going to make a big impact on your annual production. Now, what could potentially make an impact is that coefficiency rating in the operating temperature. Maxian, I have part of the data, so we know their coefficiency rating for the power max is negative 0.27% Celsius, right? So every degree Celsius over the operating temperature, the module's power output is going to decrease. Well, they don't provide the operating temperature. Now, if you look at their spec sheet, it'll say operating temperature, there is a section, and it says negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the operating temperature, just where you can install the panel, right? That's not the peak performance operating temperature that they've tested, you know, like a real world type of scenario. There is another rating called PTC, we're not gonna get into that. But I have that data for REC, so you can see what it looks like. So their operating temperature on the module to get their NMOT rating, 309 watts was at 111 degrees, right? So that's 44 degrees Celsius. If you go above that number, the power output starts dropping at 0.26%, right? So it just slowly, it, the power decreases as it gets hotter, right? The panel still operates at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit temperature, like freaking freezing and extreme heats, 185 degree temperatures. I don't think we're finding anywhere, even in Palm Springs that are reaching 185 degrees. Hopefully we never will, but you never know these days. Now Q cell doesn't have as good as a coefficiency rating as Maxian and REC. They are negative 0.34%, but their power, their operating temperature is still rock solid at 109 degrees Fahrenheit and that's 43 degrees Celsius. There is always that plus and minus to it, but you need both those numbers. You can't just look at the coefficiency rating of a panel. You have to look at that operating temperature. When does it take into account? On some of uh, Q-Cell's previous generation panels, I wanna say, I wanna say it was like their G6 or, or G7, that they had a higher actual operating temperature. I want to say it was like 113, 115 degrees, but their coefficiency was still negative 0.34%. So it took more time, you, you, the temperature would increase. And when you factor that delta in against say like the REC panel, the gap was actually a lot closer in terms of the degradation under extreme temperatures that were exceeding the operating temperature um, for ideal conditions. So just one thing to keep in mind, that was an area I didn't have data on on the max end, but it, they do seem to indicate a very strong coefficiency rating, but without having that operating temperature, we don't know 100% if it's amazing or if it's just really good. Now, the one thing that really stands out with Maxian over REC and Q-Cell is their 40 year, yes, you're hearing this correct, 40 year product performance and labor warranty. Yeah, labor is included in that 40 year. There's an asterisk to this. 
In order to receive that 40-year warranty, it has to be installed by a certified partner like Pacific Sun Technologies and be registered. Though this is no different than what REC already has us do. We're a certified partner for all three of these manufacturers. QCell doesn't require registration of their systems to get the 25-year warranty, but you don't get labor. REC does require you to register the system to get that labor warranty. Maxi, and if you don't register it, you'll just get the standard 25-year warranty. You get the labor still, you get all 25. So it's a little give and take on these different avenues. Now, one thing I want to kind of talk about is that performance warranty, right? So 40 years on Maxian. What is the power retention at that? Well, it's 88%. It's actually a little bit more. The rate of degradation on the module cannot exceed 0.25% per year after the first year, which they have set at 98%. So you lose 2% in the first year, and then it's, it shouldn't be more than 0.25% every year after that. Keep in mind, this is the maximum. And that's the same for REC. REC and Maxian actually have the exact same rate of degradation. 2% first year, 0.25% every year following up to you know the end of the term. So REC, 25 years, 92%. Maxian, if you did the standard warranty, didn't get it registered, it'd be 92%. At year 25, it's 88% at year 40. Q-cell, has a higher rate of degradation, you're getting 86% power output at year 25. No labor in any option with the Q-cell modules, though that could change. They do have a new panel coming out later this year, I believe in Q3, called the Qtron. Be sure to be subscribed to the channel if you're interested in learning more about that product. It's supposed to have a slightly higher power output rating, slightly better performance warranty. Maybe it has labor, I don't know. We'll find out when we do that video. Now. In this configuration, we have three different solar panels, and I'm gonna mix it up with three different batteries. So you're gonna see nine different prices because I think the battery and the solar panels all tie together. Do you want a high-end battery? Do you want module level monitoring? Do you want something cost-effective? You know, it's all this give and take between the, the components now to find the spot that meets your needs and wants. So the first pricing I'm gonna start off with is the Enphase system. So we're gonna be using Enphase microinverters, Enphase batteries, the 5P specifically, and then we're pairing that up with either the Maxian modules, the REC or Q-cell between each pricing category. And then we're gonna switch that over to the Canadian Solar EPQ battery system. That'll be DC coupled. So no module level monitoring. Again, Maxian, REC, and Q-cell. And finally, we're gonna go over the pricing with the Tesla system. This will be a Powerwall Plus configuration. So a string inverter with a Powerwall 2 unit configured for backup. So all three sites have backup. All three sites are for 20 panels. It's just slightly different configurations. There is some wiggle room to play with this. You could do a Tesla system with Enphase microverse, but I don't want to get all that intricate. This is just a good starting point, and then we can play with things from there once you request your quote. So let's get into it. Enphase, right? 10 kilowatt hours, 10 panel system, Maxian, $45,200 before that 30% federal investment tax credit. This is a big cost. You know, this is this could definitely go up if you have more panels. It's $7,000 more than REC. REC is at $38,000, right? There's no difference in the two. They're both 20 panels. They're both same amount of microinverters, both same battery system, medium backup configuration. It literally is the cost of the panel that's that much more. So you are definitely playing for that solid copper back sheeting and that 40 year warranty. The difference between REC and Q-Cell is pretty small. I mean, we're, it's like a hundred bucks. And I feel many of our customers tend to just lean more towards REC because that price difference between Q-Cell isn't big enough than with REC, right? So let's move on to the Canadian Solar EPQ battery because this guy, this thing behind me, oh, that's the interface. This one behind me has been crazy popular in the most recent uh, months. Since we started offering the Canadian Solar EPQ, we've been retrofitting it to existing solar systems and been installing it and new systems because it's a phenomenal premium battery at a great price. And you can tell with the Maxian configuration how much it shaves off compared to Enphase. One, you get more storage. So we're getting over 13 kilowatt hours of storage instead of 10. And 
you're only having to sacrifice that module level monitoring. Now, for some of you, that might be a big deal. You know, you're saving $3,000, you're having to give up that module level monitoring. Maybe you have six or seven arrays. That may not be a good idea because this thing only has four MPPT inputs, which is similar to Tesla's inverter. So a lot of things to take into account that we might discourage you from going with it on a DC side. Maybe we'd say, hey, why don't we do end phase and microinverters and still AC couple the EPQ battery because it's so compact, it takes up so, so much little room compared to end phases batteries. These ones right behind me, these are the three T's. These guys are tiny, they're pretty much discontinued. We moved on to the five piece, done another video on that, check it out. But moving back onto the price, REC, Maxion, $7,000 difference again. We're at $35,500 for an EP cube system using REC panels. That's, that's $3,000 less than going with the end phase system. And then you move on to Q cell, the price gap, gap gets a little bit bigger in this configuration with the EP cube. And it's, it's you know almost uh, $800. So for $800 more, I still feel a lot of our customers lean towards REC. Now, Tesla system's a little bit cheaper than the EP cube, not by a lot and you're looking at 42,000 with the Maxim panels, right? Still a $7,000 price difference compared to REC, 8,000 compared to QCell. Anyways, that's what you got to compare off of. The pricing I think is going to be the biggest determining factor on whether or not you're gonna go with a Maxim panel. Now, if you got a quote from SunPower, maybe your quote's different. I don't know what kind of battery they're pairing that up with. If there's a battery, are they doing self-consumption? Obviously the pricing I'm showing is for backup, right? These are solar systems with batteries, for home backup. And if we forego the backup capabilities, the pricing would come down another five or $6,000 easily because you don't have the emergency loads panel and the transfer switch. So those are things you gotta kinda take into account. Maybe watch some of our other videos regarding why you may not need battery backup. Now, currently Tesla doesn't have that option. It is solar backup every time, right? We can't forego the backup equipment with the Tesla system. Maybe on the Powerwall 3, we'll be able to do that, but for right now, with the Powerwall Plus and the Powerwall 2, we have to include the gateway and the emergency loads panel. But Enphase and the Canadian Solar EP Cube can do 100% self-consumption, so that way you generate your own solar energy, you store it on site, and then you reuse that solar energy in the evenings when there is no solar production to power your home. So there's a lot of things going on in the space right now on the solar panels, on the battery side that I think you're gonna wanna pay attention to moving forward this year. And I think some of the brands that are really starting to stand out to me, at least so far, is REC, Qcell, Enphase, and the Canadian Solar EP Cube. Tesla is definitely making their rounds. And if we see the Powerwall 3 in Q3 of this year as it's supposed to be released, that might be a, a, a big change for a lot of people. But if you're just looking for something right now and that's really high quality, really good, we definitely have you covered. We have a diverse product lineup available to you, different panels. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be comparing the Canadian solar modules with the Aptos DNA modules that we have to offer. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can check that comparison out as well. And then we're gonna be comparing more of the batteries throughout the year. So you're gonna to wanna to be in tuned on all these different things going on. And I'm really glad that you tuned in to at least watch and learn about the solar panels that we're comparing in this particular video. So that's all I got for this week's video. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you'll take the minute and go ahead and request your quote from us by using the link down in the description below. It doesn't hurt to at least request and kind of get an idea of what a system from us might cost versus you know a bigger organization that's nationwide. You know We've been doing this for over 15 years and we're really well respected in the industry. We like what we do. I definitely like what I do. And I'd love to have you as a customer at the end of the day. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.